Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and today let's start Knights of the Old Republic 2. Now I'm gonna use four mods, and the first one is Restored Content mod, which restores almost all the content that was cut out from the game. I'm also using a widescreen mod, upscaled cinematics, and upscaled icons, and as always, you can find a link in the video description for all mods that I'm using and many more mods that are great addition for this game. Now finally, let's begin. Now we have to pick one of three classes and the first one is male or female consular. This one focuses more on using force. Then we have a male or female guardian. This one focuses more on using weapons. And then we have a male or female sentinel, which is actually a balance between these two. And now I'm gonna pick a male sentinel. Now I know, I know, some of you will say that I suck because female character is canon, but this is an RPG, we never got Knights of the Old Republic 3, and the canon stories that we got, for me at least, they didn't do justice to Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2. Now we will make a custom character and I'm gonna pick this one. And for attributes, we have Strength, which increases your melee damage and a chance to hit. We have Dexterity, which increases range damage, chance to hit and defenses. We have Constitution, which increases health and allows us to use implants. We have Intelligence, which increases how many skill points we gain on each level up. We have Wisdom, which increases force points, and it gives us defense against force powers. Then we have Charisma, which increases force power potency. It also reduces the force power cost of the opposite alignment force powers. So basically, if you are a light side Jedi and you want to use dark side powers, Charisma will reduce the cost of that dark side power. And Charisma also gives your followers a higher chance to hit. Now these are the points that I like to have in the beginning. Now in skills, we have orange skills and green skills. Now the orange skills are also known as class skills and they require one point, while the green skills require two points. So I'm gonna pick all orange skills except stealth, because we don't need stealth. Now for feats, I will pick up demolition. This way the demolition skill will cost 1 point instead of 2 points, since that is not a sentinel skill. And for name... I'm gonna name him Do It. Now this is a prologue, we can choose to continue it or skip it. Press W, A, S, D to move T3M4, then turn. 
Press caps lock to toggle first person freeload. Hold control to look about. This is the galaxy map. It shows you are near Paragus, a mining colony. When the hyperdrive is fixed, you can use the galaxy map to choose a destination planet. Sometimes we can choose to lockpick or to bash containers to break the locks. And if we do choose to break the lock on some container, then we also have a chance to break the item inside a container.
The splash door is magnetically sealed and cannot be opened. This is the cargo hold. Sensor droids emerge from this box when you opened it. These droids will make for excellent target practice. Use the weapon from this container to attack the droids. You can equip a weapon from the equip screen. To open the equip screen, click on the blaster icon in the top right area of the screen, or press U. Now we have to equip our weapon that we just found. Okay, so the game just told us if we want to open this cylinder, we have to lower our difficulty. As you can see, we are on the maximum difficulty. And difficulty does affect some skill checks. The lock on this metal box is too difficult to open. You can use one of the security tunnelers you found to crack this lock. Select the security tunneler by clicking on the arrows above or below the security icon. So now we can use a security tunneler. They allow us to open the locks for which we don't have enough security skill yet. But I'm gonna reload because I don't want to do this on easy. Press the order difficulty setting in order to open this lock. Access the options screen and select game. Let's see if we can do it this way. So yeah, we can't do this on the highest difficulty. Talking to other characters is much easier than the computer console in the cockpit. Scroll through your response options or move the mouse cursor, and then click to select a response. Note that some responses may influence how other characters react to you, so choose carefully. Furthermore, certain skills, powers, and attributes may modify what choices you have or how successful you are with those choices. 3CFD is malfunctioning. You can fix him by using a part. Luckily, you have already found one. If you repair 3CFD, you 
can join your party and assist you in repairing the ship. Success! You have fixed three CFD. Now he will join your party. Now we can turn on the solo mode down here. This lift will take you to the outer hull of the Ebon Hawk, where you will find many parts and mines to use for accessing and repairing the hyperdrive. Use the lift controls to go up. This is the main hold. Okay, we will do this later. This blast door is magnetically sealed and cannot be opened. The door is sealed shut, but the magnetic clamps are not in. This is the garage. <laughs>
This is the starboard side of the Ebon Hawk. This busted engine port has some needed parts for the Ebon Hawk's hyperdrive. Take the parts here back down below to get main power restored. This open hatch has some parts that will be useful for getting main power restored. These exposed wires control the door to the starboard dormitory. The door is currently sealed, but you can override it from here. Success! The door is open. You can now access the starboard dormitory through the garage. Don't forget to explore the other side of the Evan Hawk. This is the, the bubbles ahead indicate mines that you've detected automatically with your awareness skill. Some mines require higher awareness to detect. Approach mines carefully. They will blow up and damage you if you get too close. You can use your demolition skill to either disable or recover these mines. Recovering mines requires a higher demolition skill than disabling them. But you get to keep the mine, which you can then use to set as a trap for enemies or break down into components at a workbench. Now the icon to the left means that we can disable the mine and the icon in the middle means that we can recover the mine. Recovering the mine will give us a mine in our inventory and that means we can use it later. For this we need a demolition skill and we also gain experience when we disable or recover the mine. But we do gain more experience if we just recover it. You can use the explosive device in this missile to blow open the engine room door inside the Ebon Hawk. This will give you access to the hyperdrive. After you plant a mine, back away quickly so that you do not take damage. This is one of the Ebon Hawk's quad laser turrets. They are damaged, but you can scavenge some parts from it to use in repairing the Ebon Hawk. This is the starboard side of the Ebon Hawk. the Ebon Hawk. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now we can heal ourselves by using a repair kit and we can use it by clicking on this icon to the bottom left corner and then click on the character icon to the bottom right or we can just press 5 on the keyboard to use it. This blast door is magnetically sealed and cannot be opened. This is the starboard dormitory. You found a droid flamethrower. This is one of the spe- This blast door, it, this is the garage.
Now here we can heal ourselves. of who fired on it. Couldn't get much from the Nava computer. I'm surprised the ship was able to make it inside the Paragus asteroid field without the asteroid drift chart. Aside from the lone survivor, we recovered an old woman. No life signs. There was also a protocol droid and a utility droid on board. Sent both down to maintenance while security sorts through the other items on the ship. It looks like the utility droid, a T3 unit, was able to get the ship working enough to get to the colony. We're prepared to... Could be a Jedi but we won't know for sure until we get the transmission back from the Republic. If the survivor is a Jedi, that would account for the recovery rate. But I'm more concerned that a Jedi here may cause trouble. Some of the miners, especially Korta, are already st Another accident today. A detonation in the ventilation tunnels. If the lockdown measures hadn't activated, the whole facility would have been destroyed. Got most of the injured to the Kulto tanks in time, but the rest had to go to the morgue. One of the wounded said a droid caused the accident, but we couldn't get any specifics. Miners about the Jedi. A number of the droids have been acting oddly, and not even memory wipes seem to be fixing the problem. There was a detonation in another one of the fuel vents the droids were working in. We deactivated several of them, and moved them down to maintenance. But we're still treating the plasma burns. That cuts us down to almost half shifts, and with the droids malfunctioning, we may not make the Telo shipment for this month. Fortunately, the detonation didn't cause a lockdown. Warning! There has been a fuel detonation in the mining tunnels. Emergency lockdown commencing. All personnel report to quarters and prepare for emergency venting countermeasures. No! If the ventilation systems are malfunctioning, evacuate the medical bay! Everyone evacuate! Find what you're looking for amongst the dead. Close to death. Yes, closer than I'd like. You have the smell of the Kolto tank about you. How do you feel? Yes, I had hoped as much. I slept here too long and could not awaken. It may be I reached out unconsciously, and your mind must have been a willing one. Or perhaps you have been trained for such things. I am Kreia, and I am your rescuer, as you are mine. Tell me, do you recall what happened? Your ship was attacked. You were the only survivor. A result of your Jedi training, no doubt. Your stance, your walk, tells me you are a Jedi. Your walk is heavy. You carry something that weighs you down.
So it would seem. Keep your past and let us focus on the now. I do not know. I was removed from the events of the world as I slept. A survey of the surroundings may provide the answers we seek. The ship we arrived in, the Ebon Hawk, must still be in this place. We should recover it and leave. We were attacked once, and I fear our attackers will not give up the hunt so easily. Without transport, weapons, and information, they will find us easy prey indeed. Now, we have two dialogue options with squared brackets, and you can only see them if you have enough skill points in a specific skill. Even as I slept, I felt much unrest here. I saw strange visions, minds colored with fear. Now, everything here feels terribly silent. A last word of caution. I would find out as much as you can about this place quickly. I fear we will need to depart as suddenly as we arrived. You may wish to extend your search to some clothes, if only for proper first impressions. I do not know. Why did they spare you? Indeed, a Jedi trance could protect one from such poisons. In fact, the sedatives may have been intended to keep you unconscious for some time. It would prove lethal to those untrained in such techniques, however. Most curious. And so do you. Perhaps we could discuss it at length later on. Now we have other concerns, among them finding our new enemy. I leave you to the explorations of this place. Here I will remain and attempt to center myself. Now, because we were good in the previous dialogues, we got a light side points. Can't lockpick this door, so we need to bash its lock. Emergency lockdown overridden. And we've got a new weapon. Now this is our inventory, here we can see all the items that we looted. Here on this tab we can equip ourselves. This is our character tab, here you can see the light side and dark side alignments, our stats, attributes. This is our Abilities tab, here we can see the Skills, Powers and Feats. This is our Party Selection tab, here we can see all the party members. This is the Journal tab, here we can see all the quests, side quests that we have. This is the Map tab and the Options tab. Now every time we get into combat, the game will pause. And now here we can click on the enemy and choose which attack do we want to use. Now to the left we have melee or ranged attacks, in the middle we can cast force powers and to the right we can use some items like grenades. Now for this attack we have to click it or to press 1 on the keyboard. And once we've queued up all the commands then we can resume the game and let our characters lay waste.
up because I'm not gonna say this again. The next one of you Juma heads to try and smuggle a blaster or so help me any sort of military grade frag weapons into my facility is gonna take a long walk out the airlock. Why? Because in case you forgot, Paragian fuel explodes at high temperatures. That's what blasted that chunk out of Paragus 2 and created this asteroid field. So if I catch any of you with anything other than sonic charges or mining lasers, I'll burn you and your contract. Security out. And according to one of the miners, it was because one of the sonic charges went off prematurely. And like before, it was one set by a mining droid. The three idiots were grouped so close to the charge, it might as well have been a grenade going off. The blast turned their bones to dust. The blast wrecked the internal components of the droid that set the charge, though, so we can't even dissect it to see what happened. I don't like what's going on here. Ever since that Jedi showed up, things are getting worse. It's not just Korda and his miners, or the fights, but now the droids are acting crazy. If we don't find what's causing this, or who, this facility's gonna be space dust by the time the next Helos freighter arrives. So, you're in maintenance. Then maybe you can tell me what's going on with these droids. Sir, I don't know. It's like their behavior cores are undergoing binary decay, but I can't find the source. This shouldn't be happening. Well, that's reassuring. It isn't happening. So the next time we nearly have a breach in the ventilation tunnels, I could just close my eyes and pretend it's my imagination. You better give me some answers. I want to know the damage these droids can do if they start mining us instead of asteroid rock. Sir... These droids aren't combat models. Their mining lasers are weaker and less accurate than blasters. I doubt those droids could even hit one of us. Are you blind? What about the miners in Med Bay? It's sabotage, and it started right after the commander said we weren't going to sell the Jedi to the Exchange. So I want you to find out how these droids are being sabotaged. That'll tell me who's trying to clear a path to get that Jedi off the facility and stop him. In the meantime, make sure the security's armed with all the ion and sonic charges you can find. If those droids start coming after me, I'm gonna need more than low-grade mining lasers to take them down. Clear? Yes, sir. Maintenance control out. Idiot. I installed an override switch to shut down any droids on this level, just in case someone locks me out of the administration console. As added insurance, I tied the override switch into the circuit to the holding cell door. It'll make sure it can only be opened if all droids in the level are shut down. I doubt Korda or any of his men have the skill to pull off something like this, but I'm not taking any chances while we're sitting in the middle of this asteroid minefield. Whoever's responsible won't be able to have the droids rescue him after I lock him up. Nothing will cut through that door. He'll be trapped. I secured the stealth field generator inside one of the footlockers in the security storage room. If I have the specs right, the interface field should be effective against the droid sensors. All I need to do is equip the belt, and some skill with stealth in order to use it. 
As long as I don't get too close to the droids, they shouldn't detect me. If any more droids start malfunctioning, the belt should buy me enough time to get to the override switch I set up in the communications blister console. I'd rather shut them down than destroy them. I want to find out how these droids are being sabotaged, maybe even turn them against whoever's sabotaging them. Decide what you see, and instead, reach out with your perceptions. Ah, you can feel them. The droids you cannot perceive, but the small oscillations of energy, that you can feel, echoing outwards. down the familiar paths. You will need it if we are to survive and escape this place. Now we gained a new level, and I will level up in a moment.
this door, someone yet lives. Be mindful. His thoughts are difficult to read. But you have nothing to fear from this one, and he might yet prove useful. Nice outfit. What, you miners change regulation uniform while I've been in here? Atten. Atten Rand. Excuse me if I don't shake hands. The field only causes mild electrical burns. Security claimed I violated some trumped-up regulation or another. Take it up with them if you want. But they stopped listening to me shortly before they stopped feeding me. Now that's criminal. Oh, you mean you didn't come here on purpose? I'm shocked. I really am. This slice of paradise is the Paragus Mining Facility, the only supplier of shipping-grade engine fuel to this corner of the galaxy. Paragus Fuel plays havoc with engines, but it gets the job done. As long as you don't mind the toxic byproducts and trying to mine it without blowing yourself up. Yeah, this asteroid belt is one giant minefield. One proton torpedo, even a stray blaster shot, can start an explosion that'll make the one that shattered Paragus II look like a kid's pop detonator. You know the planet with the exposed core you saw flying in? That hole was caused by the first mining station that tried to siphon fuel off the planet. Blew a whole chunk out of the planet and set it drifting out here in a big clump of fuel-cooled asteroids. So the miners drill the asteroids now, not the planet's surface. That's why they don't allow blasters here. Can't trust a miner jumped up on Juma Juice not to fire one stray shot that'll turn the entire colony into a thermal detonator. You mean before or after that Jedi showed up? Either way, it's a real short story. You see, this Jedi shows up, and you know what that means. Where there's one Jedi, the Republic will soon be crawling up your ion engine in no time. But the story gets better. See, some of the miners get it into their ferrocrete skulls that since the Jedi's unconscious, they can collect the bounty the Exchange has posted for live Jedi. Well, what passes for the law here didn't like that idea. So the two groups started fighting. Then there was some big explosion, and then I was sitting here for a long time, waiting for some half-naked miner to show up and ask a bunch of questions. Don't know much about it. Maybe the Exchange wants one as a trophy, or somebody's got something against Jedi and is looking to collect. Not many Jedi left. Wouldn't surprise me if the bounty's pretty high. The ones that weren't killed in the Jedi Civil War ended up switching off the lightsabers long ago. Word is, there's not even a Jedi Council anymore, but who knows. Yeah, Revan, Malak, and the Jedi that went to join them in the Mandalorian Wars. They turned against the other Jedi and had a scrap that almost laid waste to the galaxy. <laughs> Where have you been? Well, I wasn't there, but like all Sith, Revan and Malak turned on each other. After they turned on the Jedi, of course. Now, this dialogue here basically asks us what we did in the Knights of the Old Republic 1. Did we choose a light or dark side? And this choice here will not affect your story or gameplay in a big way, but it will affect some minor and cool details. I guess. There's rumors all over space about it. All I heard was Revan return to pay Malak back for trying to kill her in the first place. You know, women. Now, in my KOTOR 1 walkthrough, I was a male. Maybe you're right. Maybe I just hoped Revan was a woman. Look, no offense or anything, but your weird half-naked interrogation isn't my idea. Hey, wait a minute. You're that Jedi the miners were talking about. Where is everybody? The miners can't all be gone. But if they are... Look, hey, let me out and I can help you. I can. I've gotten out of trouble countless times. This facility isn't a military installation, which means we may have a chance. You shut down the cell security field and I can reroute the emergency system so we can get to the hangars. We grab a ship and then we fly out of here. Huh? What are you talking about? So you done interrogating me, or are we going to work together and try to get out of this mess? Great. Now to business. Let's get to the command console. Oh. 
All right, here we are. Now this console is set on automatic hail. You may have heard it when you came in. The asteroid drift charts are constantly being updated. So it sends out a transmission to incoming vessels so they don't get crushed into space dust. The hail warns them to keep their distance until orbital drift charts are transmitted, and then provides docking instructions to incoming ships, usually freighters. The thing is, you can bounce that same transmission back to the comm here, and suddenly you've got access to the communication system from the inside. Pure pizzack. The console's ours. Now all we need to do is reactivate the turbo lifts, cancel the emergency lockdown, and... Hey! This system's been severed from the main hub after it was locked down from remote. You can't even reroute the system, it's been cut clean. No, someone tried to lock down this whole level tight and leave us here, trapped. I doubt it. All we have is communications back for all the good trying to shout in a vacuum will do us. We could try, but if the miners were trying to trap you up here and probably kill you, why not call them and chat? I don't think a friendly call is gonna wake them up. Be my guest. Not much else we can do. The comm's all yours. Tracked at the freighter in. Was lucky it wasn't destroyed when it drifted into the asteroid field. Not much on board. One damaged droid, one annoying protocol droid, and a lot of bodies. Sent the survivor to medical and the others to the morgue. Didn't recognize the ship's ID code, so we transmitted it to the Republic for some answers. Questioned the protocol droid about what happened. Says his master, the survivor, I guess, was on the Republic ship, the Harbinger, and it suffered an engine failure. He says the survivor was a passenger on the vessel and a Jedi. If so, that's gonna mean true. Inventoried the bodies and cargo. Everything matches the protocol droid's story. The T3 droid had seized up, so we left it in storage and standby mode. Don't know what code will access it. It could be its voice activated for all we know. We put the protocol droid to work in maintenance, sorting the mining droid comm routines and updating the recognition sensors. Man, to shut him up. When the survivor recovers, hopefully we can get him off this station before there's a... Re Trouble between the work shifts. Word of the Jedi leaked out and the miners aren't sure what to do with him. Quarter's mining crew wanted us to collect the credits for the bounty the exchange has on Jedi, but I put a stop to that. We're contacting Telos to get the Republic records on the Jedi, but nobody will... No word from the Republic, but I've sent out a broadcom transmission for records on this Ebon Hawk. One of the miners said it used to be a smuggling vessel. Accidents are making the miners restless. The droid behavior course must be undergoing some kind of binary decay. Two miners were drilled by a droid's mining laser, and those blasts in the ventilation tunnels nearly caused the whole facility to blow. Okay, now we can't open this door just by shooting it. Thank you. 
Now these items have 10 out of 10 uses, so I'm not gonna use them. I will use this one that's unlimited. Cargo from the Jedi's freighter is being stored in the secure cargo hold until we can pass it through the quarantine checks. And as requested, all the programming spikes the security officers wanted confiscated have been stored there as well to prevent further system compromises. <laughs> <laughs> 
The secure cargo hold should be safe enough. If anybody wants to break into it, they'd have to blow it open with explosives. Who ordered the mining droids to repair that Jedi's freighter? I come in here off the work shift and three of them are repairing the port stabilizers? Did I miss something? Is somebody planning a trip? Because orders were that the hangar was to be locked down ever since that Jedi arrived. I don't know what maintenance is up to, but you can't just commission droids for repairs, especially with half the work shifts in Med Bay. Those droids are needed to repair the ventilation tunnels before gas builds up to terminal levels. It's not like that ship can go anywhere anyway. Even if it had the asteroid orbital drift charts, the Nava computer's been voice locked. You'd need the access code to get it spaceworthy. Considering this latest droid commission breach, I'm putting the droids in this section under the control of the current dock officer. If anyone sends commands to the mining droids outside this terminal, I'll be forced to enact full override. Looks like those droids got the vessel working again, even with all the damage it had taken. The maintenance officer still won't admit ordering them to fix it, though. Regardless, still no luck accessing the Nava computer. It's been voice locked. Maybe by one of the corpses we found on the ship, like the old woman. If so, that ship isn't going anywhere unless we rip out the Nava computer and put in a new one, if we even had one to spare. The only reason someone would lock their Nava computer is to hide their astrogation charts. Someone didn't want us to know where that ship was going, or where it had been. Only smugglers do that, or someone with something to hide. That Jedi's got a lot of questions to answer.
Now sometimes lockpicking or security skill might fail, so if it does fail, just redo it and you will open the lock. So is that stupid droid of yours gonna come through or not? Well, I'm beginning to think I was a little better off in my... Hey, what do you know? A little cargo cylinder came through. If he got the turbo lifts working, then we should have a clear run to the hangar. Wait, wait. Don't tell me you're taking that hatch down into the mining tunnels. Are you? That explosion I heard came from below. There's probably nothing down there except superheated rock and collapsed blast tunnels. You'd be an idiot to go down there. You're either really brave or really crazy. Or both. Alright, I'll try to monitor things from up here. And be careful. The only thing moving down there is likely to be mining droids, so don't be playing hero too hard. Uh, not that I care what happens to you or anything. I just don't want to be trying to get off this rock by myself. I'll keep the comm link open. I may be able to guide you through the tunnels from up here. Don't know if the signal will hold if you get too deep, though. Okay, now let's level up. We can level up automatically or we can just do it on our own. And it's always better to do it on your own. Now I will put all my points in demolition. For force powers, I'm gonna pick force speed. Now we can use force speed down here to the bottom left. We can click on it. Or we can just press 4 on the keyboard. Found anything? that our proximity during our long slumber may have had unforeseen consequences. 
He seemed to be able to speak without speaking. Perhaps this effect will pass with time. Then hope that we have little to say to each other, lest it prove distracting. Yes, what have you found? I do not know. Why did they spare you? Indeed, a Jedi trance, it would, and so, uh, it may, Okay, so we got new clothes. We got a shield. This shield has a limited amount of uses. Three out of three. We've also got a new helmet and a new belt.
of sonic mines down there. Don't run unless you have to. It makes them harder to spot. If you have any skill with demolitions, you might be able to recover them and use them against the droids. That is, if the mines don't get you first. If you have survey gear or a safety harness, put them on. They'll make spotting and disarming the sonic charges a little easier. Those mining droids, especially the excavator models, are designed to arm and set sonic charges for mining. Chances are if they still had charges after they went rogue, then they may have set them to try and kill the miners. And you. If you see one of those excavators, watch out. They may use their undeployed charges as projectiles. Okay, we can't recover this mine yet, so let's leave all of them here for now. Now, we also don't have enough repair for this droid, so I'm just gonna reload and leave it here for now.
Watch out. That explosion has superheated the tunnels ahead. That steam will cook the skin off your bones. If you can find a mining energy shield, switch it on. It should protect you against the heat if you move quickly enough. Okay, now let's level up. Now for feats, I wanna get repair skill. Now for force power, I wanna get... Stun Droid. Now let's see, can we recover it? We still can't. But let's check out our experience. Now let's disable it. And we still got some experience from that. Now we can also use stun droid to destroy the mine, but I just want to disable them. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now here, we want to do this. sinking fuel siphons into the 3218 asteroid shelf right now. Forget the siphons. You know that survivor they pulled from the freighter? One of the miners said they served with him on Malachor 5. Malachor 5? So he's one of the survivors. Or worse, a Mandalorian. So what? Not a survivor, idiot. He's one of the Jedi from Malachor 5. If he's one of the Jedi, hell, we can't have him walking around here. He'll... Well, I don't know what he'll do. I thought all the Jedi were wiped out in the Civil War, weren't they? One. But it gets better. I did some checking, and that bounty on Narshida is still alive. What? You want to sell the Jedi to the Exchange? Korda, have you been chewing spice? Look, you know how big that bounty is? That Jedi's our ticket off this rock. Korda, there's no way the officers will go for that. They'll lock us up for sure. Then we'll improvise.
Now we can probably pick up the mines on lower difficulty. Yeah. So on normal we can do it. Now for this thing here, I'm gonna have to use a mine in order to open it. So let's see if we can do it on this difficulty. Yeah, we can't do it on this difficulty. Let me see if I can get one more level to try it. Okay, I can get to the next level. I just have to go back. I think I can get it here. Attributes, dexterity, skills. Force powers, I'm gonna take force push. No, I'm gonna take energy resistance for now. Can we recover the mine now? 
Nice, now we can recover the mine. Now let's save. And let's compare how much experience do we get for... Disabling the mine and for recovering the mine. So first, let's save. Let's disable it. And we gained 40 experience for disabling it. Now let's reload. Let's recover it. And we gained 60 experience for recovering it. Now I came back here to see if I can get some experience from this droid that's lying down. Okay, so we got 140 experience from that. Let's see if we can get more. 120. Okay, I'm gonna take these two options because I don't want to waste all repair parts. And if I had a higher repair skill, this repair would have cost less. But yeah, I am focused more on demolition so that I can get all the mines. Okay, let's see, can we do it now?
Yes, we can. Master, you are the only organic which I may now serve. Answer, the captain of the Harbinger, Master. I was in transit to Telos to facilitate communications and terminate hostilities. However, we did not arrive at our intended destination. Irritated answer. Oh, Master, it is such a long, dull story, and not terribly relevant to our current situation. Hesitant explanation. That has been the subject of considerable discussion since our arrival here, Master. Many have attempted to claim you and this unit as salvage. I was crudely interrogated concerning our brief history together on board the Harbinger, before its communications, weapons, and engines suffered the cascade failure that disabled the ship. Speculation. It is possible you were incapacitated and locked in the well-shielded cargo compartment as the Harbinger was being systematically crippled, Master. Clarification. Yes, Master. No doubt the flurry of destruction on board the Harbinger somehow drugged you into a stupor from which you could not awaken. Most curious. Placation. Merely a turn of phrase, Master. The implication that your state was due to the result of ingesting large quantities of Juma juice was unintentional. I meant to communicate only that you were somehow rendered unconscious before you were locked securely in the cargo hold. Clarification by locked. I meant sealed, Master. My vocabulator seems to be malfunctioning. Recitation. Following the unusual set of coincidences that led to the cascade failure in the Harbinger's systems, we were boarded by a small freighter with unknown ID codes. It appeared that this freighter had been attacked, and the captain wanted to study it. This freighter appeared to be still spaceworthy. Your cargo compartment was breached, and you were taken on board the freighter shortly before the Harbinger's systems began to go critical. I, too, managed to board the freighter before the Harbinger's destruction. We were most fortunate to have survived, Master. Evaluation. Master, I do not know. Judging from the damage, it had been attacked by a much larger vessel. And when it attempted to escape the Harbinger with you on board, it was fired on again. Addendum. It does seem odd that such a small vessel has a high probability of attracting the attention of much larger vessels. Not a welcome trait in a freighter, to be sure. Explanation? I believe it was a smuggler's vessel by the name of the Ebon Hawk. Speculation. As to its purpose, I do not know. Perhaps it was always its intention to play dead, then kidnap you off the Harbinger and rob me of my bounty. Clarification. By bounty, I refer to your life, Master. It would pain me to see you damaged in any way. That is why the arrival of this Ebon Hawk caused me considerable distress. Apology. My memory core cannot provide a clear answer on that point, Master. Suffice to say that once we arrived at this floating rock, our situation became much clearer. 
explanation. Despite my market value, Master, the miners were far more interested in you. It did not take long for me to ascertain the reason for this. While an HK protocol droid is a valuable piece of property, Jedi are worth much more in certain exclusive markets across the galaxy. Painful admission. I must confess to feelings of inferiority at the speculated difference between my value and the price for your capture. I was forced to remind myself it was not due to a failing of my model or function, but because you were a Jedi. Surprised answer. Why, I told them, Master. You are the exiled Jedi who served with Revan in the Mandalorian Wars, are you not? I hope all that has happened has not been the result of a miscommunication. If so, then the problem lies with the Core War databases, which are notoriously spotty. Answer. All that has happened has been because they believe you to be a Jedi Master. They debated what to do with you as you lay unconscious in the medical bay. One group seemed intent on selling you as property. The other group opposed this. Three standard hours after the division between the miners became apparent, accidents began to occur throughout the facility. A result of improper maintenance, I believe. These accidents coincided with the degradation of the mining droid behavioral cores. Crude models are prone to such failures, resulting in murderous rampages. The mortality rate of organics in the facility rose quickly. Many miners began to join you in the medical bay as a cascade of flawlessly timed detonations occurred in isolated gas pockets in the lower levels of the facility. The explosions herded the miners into emergency sections of the station quickly and efficiently, cutting them off from communications and facility control. But sadly enough, not the ventilation systems. You see, the explosions had damaged specific sections of this facility's ventilation systems, causing a slow, lethal buildup of toxic fumes in the dormitory level. Answer. I do not know, Master. Ironically enough, any miner that fled to the dormitory level to protect themselves from the droids and the explosions would find themselves in a gas-filled death trap. It is unlikely any miners remain alive. As I said, the dormitory has been cut off from the rest of the facility, as has the hangar bay. There is no escape. Apology. Unfortunately, communication with the dormitory section is severed, Master. It is perhaps for the best, especially if any other accidents have occurred in that section. If that were the case, the severed comm link would have spared us the satisfaction of hearing the miners' screams as they lived out their last moments in fear and terror. Theory. You could walk across the surface of the asteroid to the dormitory airlock, but such a route would be extremely hazardous, and I do not wish to see you damaged. Morning. Master, continued exploration of this facility may place you in unnecessary danger. I encourage you to return to the medical bay and wait for retrieval from a vessel that is no doubt on the way, even as we continue this pointless conversation. Weary resignation. Very well, Master. But there is very little that I can do. You see, the airlock is sealed by a code. Correction. Oh, I already possess the code, Master, but I am afraid that it will do you no good. Condescending explanation. Master, the console governing the droid maintenance area and the airlock is voice printed musing. In the last days of his life, the maintenance officer was quite careful about voice protocols 
bordering on paranoid obsession. Conjecture. I suspect once he realized something was wrong in the facility, he voice locked the droid bay functions. A prudent measure, but in the end, he met the same fate as the rest of the organics. Explanation. Yes, Master. Many consoles have voice recognition sensors built into their systems so that only selected individuals can unlock them. Condescending explanation. Oh, yes, Master. The code is Maintenance Control Voice Print ID R1B5. But unless the maintenance officer speaks the code, it is useless. Answer. Master, you cannot. You are trapped here just as I am. There is nothing to do except patiently wait for whatever the future has in store for us. Of course, Master. How may I be of assistance? Answer. I am a survivor of the Harbinger, just as you were, Master. With the unexpected termination of my previous master, you are the only organic which I may now serve. Of course. Proud answer. I am an HK series protocol droid master, skilled in transorganic relations and communications. This mod has been responsible for the facilitation of communications and termination of hostilities across the galaxy. I am fluent in over 6,000 forms of communication and am also capable of nuances of expression ranging from irony to veiled threats. Clarification. Oh, yes, Master. Sometimes the facilitation of communications and termination of hostilities requires the use of every weapon in one's verbal arsenal. The unspoken threat of violence to a listener's loved ones, or if possible, their entire planet, can effectively break the deadlock in the most stubborn of negotiations. Irritated explanation. That question has been looping through my query module with alarming frequency, Master, and no satisfactory answer has been forthcoming. As a result, I have chosen instead to turn my efforts to answering the question as to how I may depart this drifting disaster area as quickly as possible. Answer. It is only a matter of time before a ship or freighter docks with the Paragus facility. When that occurs, we shall depart this place forever. Condescending retraction. I believe you will do your best, Master. This facility would have to be nailed down with a droid-level precision to prevent your escape. Of course, Master. Hesitant answer. Ah, a T3 utility droid would be a common sight in this facility. It is indeed curious that I have not seen many since my arrival. However, I feel I must inform you that, droid prejudice aside, T3 models exhibit excessive individualism when not routinely memory wiped. This individualism can become such a nuisance that even a droid such as myself is tempted to reduce them to their base components, if not crush them into slag. But enough of my seemingly irrelevant tangent. Where did you leave the droid, Master? That would logically be the best place to look. Answer. Ah, then that would explain why such a T3 unit isn't here, Master. I believe my photoreceptors are functioning adequately enough to verify that. Of course, Master. Accessing memory. Ah, yes. I believe you've asked this question before, Master. Let me see if I can recite the answer I provided the first time. Oh, yes. It was, 
Where did you leave the droid, Master? If you are looking for garbage, it would be best to ask a custodial unit, not a translation droid. Answer. Ah, then that would explain why such a T3 unit... Of course. Answer. That is all that remains of the maintenance officer, Master. At the end, he was quite incoherent from the pain, and attempts to facilitate communications with him proved useless. I heard his dying screams as the droids he tended turned on him, mining him like a piece of asteroid rock. Recitation. Oh, yes, Master. The record of his last moments were... Five droids, burning through the outer door. They're, they're forcing their way into the bay. Please, stop with it! Oh, oh no, they're, they're through! Oh, my leg! They're burning through my leg! I, oh, stop! Stop, please! Addendum. His remaining attempts at communication are variations in Decibel Master, ranging from frenzied screams to gibbering inarticulate attempts to beg for his life. <laughs> Man, I love these droids. Objection. Master. To commit such an act would be in violation of the ethics programming most droids are believed to possess. I am afraid there is nothing that can be done. Proud answer. Master, I believe my vocabulator is working adequately enough to accommodate your request. A recitation. Maintenance control voice print ID R1B5. There. Was that sufficient, Master? Alarmed objection. Oh, Master, no. I might inadvertently speak such a command near a console and accidentally unlock something I shouldn't. I was merely speaking such to prove to you that I could. It is a trait I'm quite proud of. Confused query. I am sorry, Master. Were you speaking to yourself? Of course. And we will continue this in the next episode. So if you liked this one, give it a like, dislike if you think it sucked, and until then, may the force be with you.